here today to talk about a Ida Python embedded toolkit and how it is life changing when reverse engineering embedded device firmwares. So who am I? My name is Maddie Stone. I am a reverse engineer and embedded developer at the Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Lab out in Laurel, Maryland. And mostly I do just work on embedded devices. So little microcontrollers and microprocessors that are running generally bare metal and then doing the hardware reversing of the PCBs and protocols and making that connection. Um, and I also lead our reverse engineering working group out at JHUAPL. So the reason I am here to present and share this toolkit with you is because I use it day in and day out, and it has saved me hundreds of hours, I would say, in, when reversing these microcontroller firmwares, and just by leveraging Ida Python. So I know there's a lot of us out there who just like to start playing, so if you'd rather just do that, the link's up there, all the scripts are there um, on GitHub. Please let me know what you think and try it out. So first off, what is Ida Python? Quickly, it's just a way for you to automate all these different functionalities within Ida Pro by leveraging Python. So it's open source up on GitHub from Hexrays, and then there's the docs. We've heard a lot, you know, that sometimes the docs can be difficult to understand and where are the functions that you really need. So here's my tip. About 98% of all of the code that I'm going to go over today and is found in the scripts it comes from just that IDC module. Um, so if you get to the docs, don't really know where to start, just go, click on IDC and start looking for the functions you need there. But why do you care? We've heard talks about Ida Python before, and I'm not the first one to release some plugins with it or use scripts. But what I found as I've been reversing is that most of the resources out there are for x86 and ARM-based systems, and also looking at malware or software applications. But what I was needing is really how do we leverage the fact in the inherent pieces of when you're reversing a firmware microcontroller um, and use Ida Python to speed up that process. So there are some really great resources out there. Palo Alto Networks has a great blog post about um, some ways to get into Ida Python, and as well as um, Alexander Hanel has a really great PDF book you can just download that's a beginner's guide. So if you're just getting started there too, I would highly suggest those resources. But I wanted to take this other spin, and we all know that embedded devices aren't going anywhere. And so this is my goal, is to try and start building up the same level of tools that we have for x86 and ARM for these microcontroller and microprocessors. So some of the important differences, why can't we just translate all of our tools across and use the same things for embedded devices as we do for software applications? But the biggest thing that I've always found is the purpose of analysis. Embedded devices in and of themselves are just a processor controlling some physical um, effects or reading in some physical inputs, which is very different than when you're analyzing a software application and you're looking at processes and how it's affecting different just data. So the different scripts that I have are really focusing on let's speed up our process of reverse engineering by focusing on GPIO inputs, let's focus and triage on control algorithms, communications interfaces into and out of the chip. So that's sort of where we're going with this. And then some other inherent differences is when you're analyzing a firmware image, you just have a binary blob. You don't have headers to tell you where to start or where's data or where there's other stuff. You just have a bunch of ones and zeros put together and need to figure out um, how all of that fits together into this larger system you're looking at. So, and the biggest key point of this um, toolkit that I'm releasing that was really important to me was to make it as architecture agnostic as possible. Because when you are looking at a bunch of embedded devices, it is highly unlikely that you are going to continue returning to the same processor and same architecture over and over again. So you don't want to write a whole bunch of tools just for that one device or thing that you're looking at. So that's what we do through these scripts is that they are not specific for any processor or architecture out there. So the scripts can be broken up into sort of three different areas and that's how we are going to talk about them today. Is first we've got our triage scripts to really just help us turn that binary blob into something we can start analyzing. Then we have scripts that actually help us speed up the analysis process and really scope and focus all of our reverse engineering and more quickly understand the interactions going on within the firmware. 
And lastly, there are ways to annotate our databases to really help us quickly see what we're looking for and move throughout the static analysis process. But what do I mean by triage? So if you've been looking at firmware binaries, then you've probably come across this. IDA finishes its auto analysis and it doesn't know anything. That's an AVR firmware image. But what about MIPS? Same thing. So let's try again with a PIC-18. And this is not anything wrong with the tool or us, it's just we don't have the headers to start in the same way. So if, when you see this, you know that you are now in for going through and going D, D, D to trying to find all of that data. Or maybe going through and doing all of the setting as codes or functions to get your way through. So these triage scripts, Super simple, but gives us a lot of return on investment so that we don't have to keep going through and manually identifying the blocks as data, the blocks as code, um, and hoping that we're finding the end of the functions correctly. So the three triage scripts that you'll find within um, this Ida Python Embedded Toolkit is the first one, as simple as it sounds, is define data as types. So where that can really come in handy and save you from just doing the monotonous uh, data definitions is that when you look at that hex and quickly see that everything is an offset or maybe it's word level data, you can just put in those addresses and have it all defined for you. Or maybe you know that there's probably code in this area um, based on looking at the hex and the entropy level, or you just want to try it throughout the whole thing. Um, define code functions will first go through and identify and assign all of the unexplored, the gold in those previous pictures, bytes, as code. It then goes through and tries to, based on your architecture, um, define each function based on the prologues and epilogues but I had said that everything was architecture agnostic. So that's where these scripts come into play is that we're using regular expressions at the minimum level needed for each architecture to really make that more powerful and expandable to all these different processors and things you come across. The last one is still as simple as it sounds of if you do happen to have a block of strings, goes through, looks for a minimum number of characters in a row and assigns all of them as strings throughout the firmware image. But let's look at what this looks like. So here we have our Otmel AVR image I showed you before that um, I did attempted to do its auto analysis on and couldn't find anything. Usually it's just because there hasn't been an entry point set, but you might not know that exactly, or you might not even know if this is a full image that you have in front of you. So you wanna try and see what is code, what could possibly be functions and things like that. So we're gonna run our define code and function script on it. And what we're just gonna do is if you haven't used Ida Python, you just select the script file, um, the Python file, and then I'm putting in boundaries based on this end address was just looking at the hex um, dump and seeing that uh, that's where a bunch of Fs started. So once we ran that through, we see that it um, identified this whole block that's blue as code and we have 141 functions now defined on it. And now our job is that much easier. Yes, there's a little block in there that was, couldn't be defined as code, but now instead of having to go through the entire thing, we just have to focus on that little piece and see if maybe that's a data table or maybe there are a couple strings or what was going on in that versus having to go all the way through this firmware image. So this is an example of how we do this architecture agnostic using regular expressions. Here's an example of within this define code and functions um, script, a couple of different architectures that I've included and tested this on. So all we have to do is look at what is generally the first instruction for functions in this architecture or for this processor, and what might be the last instruction there. So you'll see for 8051, PIC 18, and the Texas Instruments chip, I have a statement which means they don't have a consistent entry instruction for those um, instructions. But all of them do have a consistent um, exit or return statement that you can use to get better boundaries. And this just get, gives us a little smarter um, definitions than trying to just go free for, free for all throughout that whole database. So I know that sometimes people have told me regular expressions might be something they're not as familiar with. 
There's one page in Python documentation you can go to. It explains it all throughout. But if that's really the barrier to entry to this, you can also always use um, string comparisons if you prefer. So this is how we really go through each of the scripts to make them that architecture agnostic and useful to us across the board. So if you're getting a whole new processor, a whole new binary image, then all you have to do is add in these couple of lines to each script to figure out and have all of these tools transfer over. So now we move into analysis. We've triaged our binary. We see where code is. We know where our functions are. Now we want to get into what can help us move faster, know where to start looking, things like that. So the first script that's in there is find mem accesses, and it's, once again, as simple as it sounds. All of these are less than 50 lines of code. So I kind of like that return on investment for simple solutions to save a lot of time. But for architectures like 8051, they first move any memory address into a register, and then that register is always used for those accesses. That means you have no data cross-references. You don't see when functions are now um, corresponding or working with, interacting with memory, and how do you then know what code cares about the same values? So this script goes through whichever for your architecture um, memory address is used to do the cross accesses and will create data cross references across for you. And it, can, it also prints it out in a file or a CSV format so that you can quickly scope through, search through, figure out who is all talking to the same place, who cares about the same values. The last one in this analysis area is one that I use all the time and I think is one of the most powerful things for me. If you're looking at microcontroller firmwares, it's, you're, probably pretty often, um, you're probably pretty often running into indirect mem offset memory accesses. So what that is is this example on the left where you just have a register that has a defined value throughout your database, and then all of the memory accesses are offsets from that. We find this a lot in these embedded devices because they're usually writing their code for memory, many different configurations of the device and just use a table to tell you which of the values they actually want to use. But you, again, can't see that. You can't see what code is talking to each other and what values they're using and how that all interacts. So what this script does is it uses the regular expressions just like the other to find all of these indirect um, offset accesses to that variable that you know. It resolves the address, pulls in the actual value if it's read-only memory so that you can see it right there in front of you, and it also creates bidirectional data pointers. So now you know when everyone cares about this value or three different places are writing to this access, and you can analyze that much quicker. So the box on the right shows how this script would go through and display this data to you now. And because we're actually changing in the load instruction, we're changing the um, operand right there, we can now click on it and go directly to that address as well. So let's see what this look, looks like in the actual database. So this is a C166 Siemens architecture, which is about an uh, early 90s microcontroller. Uh, and it does a lot of these indirect offset accesses. So you can see it at the top here, maybe. There's a couple of them, the loads at the top. And then there's also this add three instruction that we're looking for as well. The reason this um, firmware image was a good candidate for this script was because we were able to look and see that frame pointer, the FP register, was only ever assigned to a value once. So we know that it is setting uh, it is the pointer to a table and everything else is an offset from that one value. So then we're going to let this run. And we will see, well, after I select the actual script, we will see that it, it will change all of those values. We can click, we'll see all the cross references, and now we can know which code interacts with each other and where they care about the same things. So now we see the values there. We can click on them, do cross-references to and from them, see all the different places.
and even just go straight to that address as well. As I scroll trying to find an ad. So there you go. That's where it's again a simple solution that provides us a lot of powerful things to more quickly analyze um, a firmware image. But how do we do this? Where's the IDA Python come into play? This is every single, this is all of the lines that actually have to leverage IDA Python versus regular Python, let's call it. So there's a lot you can do, and I don't want IDA Python to be the barrier to entry to really trying to automate a lot of your processes in IDA. So the first thing we do here and we see is the git operand command. And all you need to know is it does exactly what it sounds like. You're going to take the address you're interested in, it's zero index to get the operand, and you have a string of the operand there. The dashes are, there was a couple of other print statements in there and processes, but then this if offset was a match to the regular expression for what we were looking for in the operand. And the first things we do here is we're just first checking is it negative or positive so we can calculate the new value that we want to put there and resolve that memory address. The next IDA Python command we use is op alt. That's all you have to do to change the operand's presentation in the instruction. And now you can click on it. You can see the actual memory address. You don't have to think, what is the FP plus this value? Um, it's all there for you. And then add DREF is how we actually create those data cross-references from one place to another. The next, oh, and then you have a couple options for the even the types of offsets you want to create. If you want to do a little more processing, someone wants to add that in, I don't mind, um, to, do, to figure out whether it's reading that value, writing that value. I'm just using text here to create them, um, but you have those options too. Oops. Um, the last one there is make com, and that's how we created the comment at the end of the statement for those add threes when we didn't want to overwrite an operand. Um, and that also allowed us, since we used the same structure as a memory address, we were able to just click on it. The last statement we use in this script that's IDA Python API is next head, and that will just get you the next instruction or the next function um, in the a database instead of having to figure out how long was an instruction um, or something like that and adding to it you can just go straight to the next one so that's really how simple this can be to get these powerful tools and really speed up your analysis process so the last sort of category that we're looking at is annotating our databases to just help scope triage different things like that so the first one out here is something that is I use quite a bit because once again when we're looking at embedded devices many times there's a lot of dead code in them because some, they're writing the same you know large image and just putting configuration variables in a double EEPROM or another serial chip for their configuration so there's or they're so some of those configurations might also be for when they're using peripherals or not so how do you scope to the code you actually care about this function goes through and first triages all of the functions that exist to find which ones have zero cross-references to them. This obviously only works if you're working on an architecture that doesn't do indirect um, function calls, but for those that don't, it is extremely powerful, like 8051, C166, things like that. Um, so you first go through, you find all those functions without cross um, without cross-references to them because they have no way to be called. You label them as such, but then you go through again and you continue down the path to find all of the functions that have no way to be called um, throughout the image. So even following the call tree down multiple times so you know that you're not spending time in code that doesn't actually run. So it's really helpful to see and be able to scope your analysis to places that really are worthwhile for your time. The next one gets back to our purpose of analysis. When we're looking at these embedded devices, we really care about what are the GPIOs doing? What are the peripherals, whether it's CAN, serial, uh, compare captures? What are all of those interacting? Because that's, how, that's the purpose of this processor is to control some physical um, circuitry. 
So this script goes through based on a regular expression and can find all of the functions that either read or write or interact with in some way these ports and peripherals that you care about. So again, you're using the regular expressions to understand that these are where my control algorithms live that are going to read in all the values of my circuits or write to them or interfaces and things like that. But more than anything, what I hope you can take away from all of this is that this is every IDA Python API function that was used to create all of these scripts we've talked about. So it's really not that scary <laughs> when you look at the documentation or things like that. My tips for you are, if you're looking at the documentation um, and go to IDC, you really can just focus on the gets and the makes for a lot of things. Um, the asks are generally used if you want user input, um, but it's really not that complex to get powerful tools out of it. So yeah, the only two functions in here that were not found in IDC is add deref, which was the adding the data reference and cross reference to. So what's next? Um, all of the scripts are online. I would love feedback. I would love for other people to add to them. I think it would be great if we continued to create embedded device tools in the same way that we are focusing on applications and malware analysis tools because we know that it's only going to continue growing. Um, so I had a lot of other script ideas that I think could be powerful. If anyone's interested in helping do them, <laughs> that would be awesome. Um, and I'd love to hear your feedback based on what you think of the scripts or if they're not quite clear because I know it's something that I use every day and really helps me. So I'd like to share that with y'all. So thank you. Are there any questions? All righty, thanks y'all.